I tried the Zoom 75, and you should too. Why? And you should too? Well, howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech, and I tried over 40 keyboards last year. And let's just say in my quest to find the best budget keyboards, this one might be it. Now, budget is a flexible term, we'll talk about that later. In this video, I'll be trying this very pretty keyboard, the Zoom 75, and I'll be putting it to the test to see if it's actually as good as it seems. But there's a pretty big twist. This keyboard is gonna be entirely stock. I won't be doing any modding myself. Yes even the stabilizers. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, you're insane. That's insane. You can't build a custom keyboard without modding it. It's not going to be good. Well, just trust me on this one. It's going to be immaculate. Immaculate. Speaking of immaculate, it's crazy that you guys haven't pressed that juicy immaculate subscribe button. Maybe I'll unblur this footage of my feet if you do. Ahem. <clears throat> Let me just say, this video is sponsored by Mellatrix, aka Wuche Studios, who've sponsored me a lot in the past. With all of my keyboard sponsorships, they did not get a chance to review this video, they haven't told me what to say, all of my thoughts are my own, if you don't believe me, look at my ASUS videos. If it all burns down. Now, we'll get into why this keyboard is so good stock later, but first let's unbox it. Now, this keyboard starts at $179 US dollars for the wired version, and we'll talk about the wireless version later. Also, please watch this back, you see that? You see the cable that I just took? That cable is very important, and I'm gonna completely forget where it went. However, for you British viewers, you might be very excited by the fact that you do get a knob. However, just for context, I'm gonna be building the $199 version in this video with a couple simple upgrades. So I'm very sorry, British viewers, say goodbye to the knob. This is gonna be the last time you'll ever see it. Goodbye, knob. If you aren't British and are somehow afraid of knobs, there's also a hot swap socket module, but we'll talk about these modules more in a second. Now it's worth noting that this keyboard is a group buy, meaning that if you purchase it, it will not show up for at least a couple months. Generally, I think group buys are pretty cringe. I literally made a whole song trashing them. However, Mellatrix has a pretty decent track record of shipping within a few months, so I'll give them a pass here. Speaking of pass, if you pass on the knob, you might pick up this LCD module for 20 bucks, and we'll be checking this out more later. Now, this keyboard has a million different customization options and accessories and add-ons that I can't talk about all of them, but this specific carrying case is an extra 22 bucks. I don't think it's very necessary, but some of you might see it as quite cool. Personally, I think the art might have been done by an AI. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. After breaking into it, you might think this is incredibly daunting as a beginner, but I'll walk through most of it. First, they have all their screws labeled, and no, these aren't Flaming Hot Cheetos, they're gaskets that we'll look at later. For the plate, I decided to go with polycarbonate, it tends to give the deepest sound, so that's what I like to go for. Now, huge disclosure here, some things that you'll be seeing in this video are totally different than the final version, as this is a prototype board. And this PCB is one of them. So the final PCB will be hot swap, but it will also have RGB LEDs, which will make it very, very epic gamer time. This PCB is hot swap, so you don't have to solder, and it supports a couple different layout options, but definitely not everything. But, oh my god, why is there- there's a corner cut out of my- my PCB, oh no! The corner, no! <laughs> just kidding, that's where the modules go, silly. Uh, please leave a comment. Haha, <laughs> you got me so good there, Hippio. Very good job on getting me there. Thank you. Anyways, speaking of things that we get, lots and lots of foam. Now, I mentioned earlier that you don't need to mod this keyboard, and that's really true, because it comes with so much foam. Now, I don't know if that counts as you modding it or not, but we'll get into that more later. Also, these stabilizers. Oh. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, it's been three minutes and you've only talked about accessories. This is absolutely ridiculous. Or you just skimmed through that section and you're here now. But hey, look, it's the keyboard in the keyboard video. <laughs> this is the Zoom 75. Say howdy, hey. This is the Sky Blue Essentials Edition. So it's a little bit fancier and $20 more. But your overall experience will be pretty similar with the $179 wired version. It just won't be wireless and as fancy. If you're watching this video, you'll probably click the link in the description and think, Hippio, it's already sold out. However, it actually starts selling on April 11th. So if you're watching this video before April 11th and you click the link in the description, it'll show as sold out, but it's actually not even selling yet. So wait till April 11th. But here's the coolest part of the board, the butt. Yeah, look at, look at the butt. It's so pretty. Now here's a very epic peel for all of you that hit the subscribe button. If you didn't hit the subscribe button, I need you to legally close your eyes, please. You're not actually allowed to see this part. This is for subscribers only. Uh, no, close your eyes. Get, get those out of here. There you go. This board has about a million 
uh, th not scientific, a million color options that you can choose from. And you can actually use the configurator to kind of figure out which color option you think would look the best. Also, it's great because it's a 75% keyboard, meaning you get to keep the arrow keys and the F row, which is fantastic. I've been asking them to make a 75% literally since they had me look at the Zoom 65. But as this is a keyboard kit, we're going to have to build it ourselves. Now, the first step is to make sure you know where your cat is. My cat is on my desk, so I'm going to make sure that I shoo her away with these flaming hot Cheetos. Uh, sorry, I'm actually gonna put the gaskets on the plate of the board. The final version of this board won't have red gaskets, these are just prototype gaskets, but they will be socks like this that you just slide over the plate of your keyboard. Now, these don't give the best flexibility performance, but I love them the most of any gasket simply because they're the easiest to install. You just, boop, slide them on, there's no adhesive, there's no headaches, there's no Hippio having a mental breakdown for 30 minutes, sorry, anyways. After doing that, it's time to unscrew the keyboard and take a look at the insides. Now, this part right here is where you install your fancy little modules, and I'm personally using the LCD screen module. Now, remember earlier where I was talking about that cable? Yeah, so I had completely lost it. I thought it just wasn't included in the, the keyboard at all, but look, it was there the whole time. I searched around for about 30 minutes, and I had put it in the trash. Anyways, that cable was necessary for connecting the LCD, so that really sucked. Now, as I mentioned before, I've got the wireless edition, so I've got to install the battery, and I think the final version is gonna have two batteries, they were saying. I'm not really sure how that's gonna work, but yeah. Now, they also sent me that internal weight that you saw that was silver. However, I opted to just go with foam instead, as it's a $20 add-on, and I don't really think that's worth it when you can just use foam and spend the $20 on something else. Next, I'm just gonna add the included PE foam and then bada bing, bada boom, it's stabilizer time. Now, Mellatrix was watching when I streamed this keyboard build on Twitch. Uh, by the way, I stream every week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hippio. And they were absolutely terrified at the thought that I was gonna be using these stabilizers completely stock and only factory lubed. But I don't care. I said, I'm gonna use them stock. Your mileage may vary with this one, but mine had quite a lot of factory lube on them. So I figured, you know what? I don't really need to lube these. So I'm definitely gonna leave you on the edge of your seat on whether or not the stabilizers are gonna tick or whether or not my spacebar stabilizer is gonna tick. Who knows? Also, the stabilizers were included. Next, I just install the stabilizer with some screws and put the plate and PCB foam in. Technically, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but I just wanted to make sure that everything works. I also added the back foam, which is incredibly satisfying to apply. You just kind of squish it down and then peel the back uh, little plastic layer off of it. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, you said you don't need to mod this keyboard. Well, I mean, technically I'm, I'm not modifying it. I'm just building it, right? Right? I don't know. You guys can comment down below whether or not you think that's dumb. Personally though, I'm gonna say that this isn't modding it. This is just using the included materials to build it like a Lego kit. Now we'll talk about how the gaskets perform and everything later, but it's time to move on to the next step. The moment that I've been hyping up, maybe, have I been hyping it up? I don't know. The switches. The switches is the part that I'm hyping up. Now, I've been known to be a bit of a shill for Wuche Studio switches, and for these, I'm actually a double shill. Now, you might notice here, it says that these are lubed. These are lubed from the factory. Now, factory lube switches are nothing new. You're probably thinking, Hippio, you're dumb. That's been around for ages. But these are something special. Just my initial feel, they are so smooth and thawky, dare I say, thawky. These are the Mirandi switches. They're a 60 gram linear that I'll have linked down below and they're 15 bucks for 35. So we're looking at roughly 45 bucks in switches here. That's definitely nothing to scoff at, but considering that you might not need to buy lube, a brush, a lube palette, this could save you a lot of time, just like the magic that I used to put them into my keyboard. Now, some people really enjoy the switch modding and switch lubing aspect of the hobby. I'm definitely indifferent after lubing thousands of switches. I think your first batch of switches is pretty fun to lube, but once you get to thousands, it's, uh, you know, you, sometimes you get burnt out. Also, there it was compared against my daily driver keyboard. It's a little bit tall in the front. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, what keycaps are you going with? The switches are an important part, but I want to see the keycaps. Show me the, show me the plastic. Well, okay, I don't know how you guys know how my video is structured so well, but here are the keycaps that I chose. Um, Hold on, I have to look them up. I bought them months ago. These are the Sumgzin keycaps, 170 keys, double shot, SA profile, blue fishing, ANSI ISO, layout 6257U. Anyways, they're, they're $45 keycaps that I got off of Amazon. They're double shot ABS, and they're actually a sleeper hit. Now, the profile is definitely something that a lot of people might not like. These aren't cherry profiles, so they're a little bit tall and quite interesting to get used to. 
But at $45, these keycaps are absolutely insane value. Also, this might be one of the prettiest keyboards I've ever built. Please don't look at the dirt on the code button. Now around this point, you're probably wondering what the LCD screen does. And to be honest with you, their software wasn't done when I was doing this. So for me, not a lot, but for you, slightly more. Like I can cycle through the potential features of it, but I can't really do a lot with it, except for this little guy, this little dog. He runs when you type faster. That's worth 20 bucks. I don't know what else is worth 20 bucks, but that is. But I definitely think the LCD is a cool feature, but definitely not essential. Like if you're on a budget and 179 bucks is pushing it, just go with a basic layout with a knob. It's gonna be much more useful for you. But this total build comes in at around 269 US dollars, which makes it definitely not super budget actually. Like I would say compared to a keyboard where the case is gonna cost you $300 though, this is really good value. Especially because if you're just the average person that just wants a keyboard that's good enough, then this keyboard is gonna do that for you. The gasket performance isn't exceptional, especially when you fill the keyboard with foam, no duh, but it is still there. You still get a slightly more flexible typing experience. And with the color options and the weight and the premium aluminum and I, you know, this one, I really, I'm not mad at basically anything about this keyboard. Except that it's a group buy, which I still think is dumb. Mellatrix, you guys need to stop doing group buys. Seriously, you're watching this, stop doing- Now, wait, 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 wait. You're probably thinking, Hippio, this board, is it better than the QK75? Is it better than this? Is it better than that? I'll have another video on this at some point in the future answering all of those questions. I still don't have a QK75, so I can't actually tell you. But what I will say is that if you buy this keyboard, you will not be disappointed. Well, maybe you will. Maybe you have buyer's remorse about anything you buy. But anyways, I'll be leaving you guys with a sound test. It's going to be a really good, beautiful sound test. So I ask that you watch this whole entire thing to support my YouTube algorithm overlords. I also ask that you do a sound test of your own in the comments to let me know what you think of this keyboard.